If you're one of these people who just likes to wing it, and it's always worked for you, you never had to study for a test, you just showed up, you got A's or B's or C's were good enough, and that's what you're used to in life, and you think you can continue this when you're pregnant and you bring a baby home, you're doing it wrong. Keep watching. Well, maybe that'll work for you, and maybe that has worked for many people on the planet, but I do know that reactive versus proactive parenting also works right here when we're giving birth. As a matter of fact, those breathing techniques that they taught us when we're giving birth, deep breaths, shallow breaths, that's what we need for the rest of our lives raising children, but I digress. When you bring home your newborn into your house, a lot of things already have to be in play. Number one, there should be a place for the newborn to sleep. Whether you want them in a cradle, whether you want them in your bed, whether you want them in a place next to your bed or in a separate room, whatever it is, it needs to be set up. All of their clothes that they need, and my goodness, they need a lot of clothes. They need a lot of onesies. And depending on the season is whether it's going to be a long sleeve onesie or a short sleeve onesie, but they do like to be in onesies. And they go through them maybe three or four a day. So you, what, you're thinking three or four a day, believe it or not, you know, between the spit up and the other stuff. <laughs> Three or four a day of onesies, you have to know whether you're using cloth diapers or whether you're using um, the disposable diapers. And if you're using cloth diapers, what diaper service? All this has to be arranged in advance. And if you're using cloth, if you're using paper diapers, what's the brand? What have you found to be the most absorbent that your friends have said? Take a survey, figure it out. What's the softest? What would you not mind on your skin? And try to your face because that's the, the most sensitive part of your body when you're figuring that out. You want to figure out little tiny socks for them. You want to figure out a little hat for them that's very, very loose, just so that their little head is covered. You have to have a lot of square blankets that are very, very smooth cotton, thin cotton, because you're going to be swaddling your babies. They're going to give you one maybe in the hospital. I know they did with my child, but then you're going to want a lot more of them. And any baby blanket that you have, you're going to want to learn how to swaddle. And you're want, going to want to learn how to swaddle a, a, a newborn before you bring your newborn home from the hospital, because it's not fun to learn how to swaddle when they squiggle. <laughs> Swaddle and squiggle, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't work together. So learn when they're not, learn on a doll. And it's, uh, if you've ever made a burrito, it's sort of like that. You know, you lay it flat, the baby's in, in a triangle, in a diamond. The baby's head is at the top of the diamond, the blanket is out like this, and then down below, there's a piece that you pull up, and with the baby still laying straight, you pull that piece up all the way to here. And so you still have a little corner up here like this. And then you bring this over and tuck it in. And you bring this side over and wrap it around. And that's how you swaddle a baby. And you pick them up. And where the hands are in the inside or the outside depends on you. I like to put the hands on the inside if I'm putting them to sleep. And I like to keep the hands on the outside if I'm interacting with them. So uh, that it's, it prevents them from scratching their faces and things like that. You'll need a chest, whether it's some boxes that are organized or um, an actual chest that you're going to put the diapers into one thing and the clothes into another and keep it as organized as you possibly can, all the blankets and another one and the, all the sheets, as many onesies as you're going to need, you're going to need that many sheets for the crib or for the um, cradle, whichever one you're doing. You'll need a lot of sheets. You can get those absorbent pads to put on top, and sometimes that could work for you, but you're still gonna need a lot of sheets. Do not put your baby in a crib with a stuffed animal, and for sure without a pillow, and do not put the infant in if they're not swaddled with a blanket. Because if you just cover them with the blanket, they don't have the ability when they're newborns to take it off their head if it covers their head or to take it away from their face if it covers their face. They don't have that ability. So the only blanket they get is the one they're swaddled in. No pillows, no toys, 
no anything else. Now you'll be like, no toys. What about the teddy bear? You can have a teddy bear. No, not when he's an infant. Not when he's an infant. Not the first three months of life because they do not know how to squiggle away from it when their nose is up against it. And it's a, it's a cause, it's a hazard. It's an absolute hazard. What you also want to make sure is, is the baby's crib is not next underneath a window that has a Venetian blind cord that's hanging. You don't want to be have the baby next to a Venetian blind cord. You squiggle over, grab, eat, choke. God forbid, these are the things, these are hazards. You want to make sure before you go to the hospital. Now, some people are superstitious and they'll be like, I don't want anything arranged till I have the baby and I get that. So then you're going to have to have a list of things that while you're in the hospital for 24 hours, there's a, there's a system going on, a bunch of friends, a bunch of friends, husbands, or your friends with hammers. I, I know who are coming and setting this up. My, my daughter was pregnant with twins setting up two cribs. So I know that it's definitely doable, but it's not preferable. I, I don't think it's preferable. If you can get someone to set this up for you, it is much, <laughs> life's easier when you have friends that you can reach out for. What else do you have to prepare for? When you go to the hospital, prepare for an outfit to come home with. That's maybe when you were six months pregnant. I know it's a little frustrating, but you're still going to be a little bit um, swollen when after you give birth to that to that baby. But if you're nursing, every single time you nurse that baby, you're taking your uterus, you're taking everything right back into, it's pulling it up and it's pulling it in and it's pulling it tighter, right? So within three months of nursing and eating properly, you can actually get your figure back very nicely. But when you go to the hospital, Pack an outfit that's loose to come home with packed pads because there will be some things going on down there, some types of leakage from the afterbirth, and um, women do tend to bleed for a few weeks afterwards. So we want to bring some pads with us, and you'll want to bring anything that is a comfort item that helps you sleep at night. Because you're, you're going to go through a giant transition in the hospital and your, your focus is on that baby, but you got to focus on you too, baby. <laughs> it's all about nurturing ourselves because we're the only ones. You know the way when you're on the airplane and they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself first? This is what it is. Make sure you get enough sleep. And how does that happen when you have a newborn? Every single time that newborn's sleeping, you sleep every single time you put that baby down for a nap your best friend comes over you'd be like wow i'm so glad you're here but i need sleep could you do me a favor just for a half an hour could you just fold this little baby clothes and maybe just sit there and listen for the baby so i can just know someone else is in the house just for half an hour i need i need a nap Right? And that way your friend came over, but they feel like they're doing something for you. And they're, they're not being chased out because you have to nap. And you're getting the baby clothes folded, which is absolutely fantastic. Also, and this is extremely important, if you have a toddler in the house and you know, you're going to bring your baby home, you need to prepare that toddler about a week in advance. It doesn't have to be a long time, but around a week in advance. And what I used to do, and you can do whatever you want, but what I used to do is I used to take my kids to the toy store and I was getting a baby and they could pick out a baby for themselves. And we would pick out a newborn baby doll for them. And uh, they got to pick any newborn baby they wanted in a little blanket so they could learn to swaddle and they could learn to give a bottle. And then they, you know, they became very helpful. And I also let them know exactly where the diapers were. So if ever I, and the, also the, dis, the, um, the cloth diapers, if I wanted to throw it over my shoulder, so they could be helpful. And I could say, could you get me? And now a week before the baby's born, we would practice this game. Can you, I would hold their little baby and say, could you please get me a diaper from the bottom drawer? And off they would go and come back and I would teach them, can you please get me one of the cloth diapers from, and they would go and we would practice this over and over again with them, me holding their baby. So by the time I gave birth and came home, I have a toddler who now is not only not jealous because he, he or she has a new role.
they're my helper. They're the big one. They get to do things that this little one can't do for himself. And mommy needs a little help too uh, because <laughs> I'm sitting here with the baby and wow, how nice to have a big child around. Now really they're not big. So we're telling them they're big, but really they're not. Do not leave a child unattended in the room with an infant. I made this mistake once and just go to the bathroom. And when I came back, my gorgeous daughter was trying to like spread the toes apart of my newly born infant son yet. So don't, <laughs> don't do that. You never know what gets into their mind, what they're going to do. And it's your job to keep them safe. Always your job. I recommend always washing your hands before you hold a baby. If you're going to put a binky, a nook into their mouth, a little pacifier, make sure that it's clean. I've seen people, when it drops, they pick it up, they put it in their mouth, or, or they, they just go like this. And usually that's with the fourth child or the fifth child. But I'm telling you, even with the fourth or the fifth, kids, it's never fun. It's never fun when a newborn gets, gets sick. It keeps us up at night. They can't breathe. And we have these little things that we, nasal things to clean out their nose. Now, let me explain to you what these nasal things are. It's sort of like a pump with a nozzle, right? And before you put it in the nose, I didn't notice the first time. I almost blew my daughter's brains out. Before you put it in the nose, squeeze it, all the air out. Then you put it in the nose. Then you open it and it sucks out all the mucus. <laughs> Putting it in, squeeze. It, it, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Another thing is you want to make sure that anyone who t comes in to hold your child, please ask them to go and wash their hands. I know it's going to sound like, oh, if I've had my second and third child, I don't have to do this anymore, but it's just because we're exhausted. It doesn't mean the germs got less, and it doesn't mean your child's not more susceptible to germs, right? We've just loosened up our rules a little bit, and we need to tighten them for newborns. Perhaps you don't care if they get sick and because you know they're going to get better, but I just know it breaks my heart when a newborn has a cold. It just breaks my heart. And it's so much easier to just have people wash their hands really good before they hold it. And this includes your toddler. This includes your husband when he gets home from work. This includes your mother. It includes you. You're going to pick up your baby. Just go wash your hands and then get your kid. Okay, so that's basically the rules for, oh no, it's not. The most important, their neck, they cannot support their head. Their head is so heavy, it's unbelievable. So when we pick up a, a newborn, zero to three months, we always have to hold our their head here. And even when we transport them, we transport them with their head over here, until they get to the other person's arm. Extremely important. Now, I've seen people have babies and baby carriers. They have the back of the baby carrier, and the, but the baby carrier, the back, it doesn't stop. There's nothing on the side. So a lot of times their head's wobbling here and wobbling there. If you're using a baby carrier, you still have to keep your head there, your hand there, to hold on to, their, to, to the base of their uh, head so that you can hold on to the top of their spine so it's not wobbling around. Now, if you're going to swaddle your baby and put them in one of those wraps, that's great. But there's a, a, a new wave going on that tends to think that the newborn can be wrapped up and doesn't have to breathe. And this is wrong. Once they come out and the umbilical cord is cut, they need oxygen just like you do. And by stopping the flow of oxygen to your children when they are sleeping or snuggling in, you might think you're putting them to bed faster. My child falls asleep faster when he's wrapped like that, even his face. He can breathe because he's against. No, you're actually knocking him unconscious. And that's not cool, and that's not good, and that's not good for brain function, and God knows what else it's not good for, because their brains are developing, their bodies are growing so quickly. They're like super computers up until the age of five. Super computers. You want to, I don't know what's happening in that brain, but you don't want to deprive it of oxygen. So please, even if you're swallowing a child, make sure that their nose is free and that air can flow in. It's extremely important. 
Okay, you might disagree with that one, but if you do, you're doing it wrong. Who am I? I'm Bubby. I'm a grandmother. I like to post these Bubby pins at least once a day. So in case you're going through what I've been through in life, I can help you out. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, share it on my, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends. Catch you later.